Hello, I am Dr. Manjul Tripathi. I am a microneurosurgeon and a radio surgeon practicing gamma knife radio surgery at a tertiary care institute of India. Gamma knife radio surgery is a form of radio surgery in which the gamma rays are used. It is an entirely different philosophy in the field of neurosurgery. It believes in more conservative approach with the principle of primum non nocere, which means first do no harm. Though it is a radiation tool, it is essentially considered a part of the neurosurgical armamentarium. Radio surgery is an integral part of neurosurgery. It believes in early preventive measure, which is more partial conservative, maintaining the good morbidity and the mortality profile compared to the conventional microneurosurgery. Any radio surgery works on a different philosophy than the conventional microneurosurgery or routine neurosurgical approaches. With radio surgery, we aim to attack the lesion in the early phase of its presentation when it is minimally symptomatic or it has been identified on an incidental detection. We do not wait for the lesions to increase in size and we attack on them when they are actually small in size. By meaning small, the lesion should be less than 3 cm in its maximum dimension or less than 19 cubic cm in its volume. For the larger lesions, Either we have to downstage the tumor or we can use a hypofractionated gamma knife radio surgery. In the last five decades, the indications have expanded and so the radio surgery with improvement in the technology and the imaging parameters. The common indications for gamma knife radio surgery are vascular malformations, metastasis, skull based pathologies such as vestibular schwannomas, meningiomas, glomus tumors, pituitary adenomas, and sometimes functional disorders such as psychosurgery, hypothalamic hematoma, and trigeminal neuralgia. Worldwide, metastasis is the most common indication. Let's discuss a few examples. In the anterior cranial fossa, cavernous sinus location is a difficult location. And surgery in cavernous sinus is really difficult and often a surgeon's nightmare because of its crowded neurovascular neighborhood. The surgery is often met with significant morbidity and mortality, which includes injury to neurovascular structures, morbid bleeding, and dismal outcome as far as the quality of life and the complete excision of the tumor is concerned. Gamma knife radio surgery is a targeted approach which gives radiation to only the target preserving the surrounding structures from any kind of injury. Common targets in this location are meningiomas, schwannomas and hemangiomas whom we call benign confined cavern sinus tumors. The other indications are the surrounding structures with their tumors extending into the cavernous sinus such as pituitary adenomas and medial sphenoid wing meningiomas or bony tumors of the clivus and the anterior process. This lady had a left-sided cavernous sinus meningioma. She presented with complaints of ptosis and headache and was primarily treated with single session gamma knife radio surgery. She had complete improvement in her ptosis within two years of her treatment. After that, she was lost to follow up. But her follow up radiology at six years was suggestive of more than 80% reduction in the tumor volume and complete improvement in the cranial neuropathy. This is an example of a large volume cavernous sinus hemangioma. This patient 
didn't opt the surgery. So he was treated with hypofractionated gamma knife radio surgery of five grays in the five fractions. Within six months, the meningioma just melted away. Gamma knife radio surgery is known to give such kind of good response for hemangiomas. It is a norm with hemangiomas, not an exception. On the other hand, the surgery for cavernous sinus hemangiomas is fraught with difficult bleeding and dismal prognosis. You can notice a remarkable improvement in cranial neuropathy corresponding to the reduction in the tumor volume following gamma knife radio surgery. This is an example of the right sided cavernous sinus trigeminal schwannoma. This trigeminal schwannoma is extending from the posterior cranial fossa into middle cranial fossa. He received gamma knife radio surgery and the lesion is nearly more than 90% gone by the end of the third year of gamma knife radio surgery. Vestibular schwannomas or the schwannomas arising from the nerve of hearing are one of the most common intracranial tumors which hamper the patient's quality of life by severely affecting hearing and facial nerve function. The common response is gradual reduction in the tumor volume while maintaining the best possible hearing, facial and trigeminal nerve function. The effect of gamma knife takes time. It is fact it starts appearing after six months and it takes nearly three years for its full effect to appear. Earlier there was a misconception that cystic vestibular schwannomas classically do not respond to radio surgery. It is actually a myth. In fact, they respond even better. As you can see in this slide, there is a huge cystic vestibular schwannoma which has remarkably reduced within no time. For now, radio surgery is the standard treatment for a small and medium sized vestibular schwannomas with a very impressive track record. The tumor control is more than 95% over a decade period with a hearing preservation up to 85% for the intracanalicular and 75% for the tumors extending into the cistern. Facial nerve preservation is seen in more than 99% patients. Any bothersome trigeminal neuropathy is hardly ever seen and even if it is seen, it is usually a temporary phenomena which improves on its own. For any pituitary adenoma, the primary treatment is surgery. But if there is any residual or recurrent pituitary adenoma, gamma knife radio surgery provides a very long and durable tumor control. For a non-functional pituitary adenoma, the tumor control is more than 90% with preservation of the hormonal outcome. Among functional pituitary adenomas, acromegaly and Cushing's disorder give a robust outcome in terms of long-term tumor control and hormonal normalization. This is a volumetric reduction over the course of one year in a case of non-functional pituitary adenoma. The tumor first starts showing high point density inside the tumor, suggestive of necrosis and then gradual reduction in the tumor volume. The tumor has gradually reduced in volume, decompressing the optic apparatus. You need to be sure about the neighborhood of the target so that they can be preserved from any unnecessary radiation.
Another complicated lesion is a jugular paraganglioma. It is a surgical challenge. Microsurgical series find high morbidity and mortality in dealing with these tumors. Radio surgery provides nearly the same long-term tumor control while improving the lower cranial nerve functions without any significant side effect. It is an example of a large volume glomus tumor which has reduced to more than 50% of its original volume with a significantly better lower cranial nerve function. This is another glomus tumor with gradual reduction in the tumor volume. नमस्कार मेरा नाम डॉक्टर मुंजुल है अब मैं आपको दिखाने जा रहा हूं कि हम गामा नाइफ के फॉर अ फ्रेम बेस्ड रेडियो सर्जरी सच एज द गामा नाइफ रेडियो सर्जरी विद परफेक्शन एंड फोर्सी आगे यू नीड टू पुट यहां पर के पिन नेक्सल फ्रेम द स्ट्रूटेक्टिव फ्रेम ऑन द पेशेंट्स हेड एंड द लोकल एनेस्थीशिया फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ द पेशेंट्स इट इज अ सिंपल प्रोसीजर Which can be done with a local anesthetic in local anesthesia. On two sides in front, two on the back post, and then the frame is tightened on the patient's head. ये फ्रेम ये फ्रेम लगाने के बाद चेक करते हैं कि देन वी एक्वायर द इमेजेस एंड टारगेट द लीजन एंड द ऑर्गन्स एट रिस्क ऑल आर मार्क्ड सेपरेटली फ्रॉम द रेडियो सर्जिकल पर्सपेक्टिव द डोज इज डिफरेंट फॉर इंडिविजुअल पैथोलॉजी then we make a plan in which the radiation is delivered only to the tumor is sparing the normal structures at risk once you are happy with the plan you check it for its conformality coverage patic index preservation of the normal structures and once you find it's appropriate the plan is transferred to the treatment station then the patient walks in the gamma suit and his head is immobilized in the gamma gantry this whole procedure remains pain free and the patient's frame is removed after the procedure on the same day then the treatment starts and it remains a completely pain free procedure on a day care basis The key to a successful management with gamma knife radio surgery is formulation of a good plan. You should be sure about the pathology which in most of the cases is on the radiology only. For the residual tumors you already have the pathology in your hand. The pathology remains the key component which ensures a proper dose to be delivered, a proper plan ensures proper radiation delivery to the tumor with preservation of the normal structures for example this is a case of glomus tumor and the radiation is given only to the tumor preserving the cochlea and the brain stem from the radiation injury to conclude gamma knife radio surgery has a competitive and supplementary role to microneurosurgery i am a microneurosurgeon and a radio surgeon booth if any lesion can be taken out elegantly safely without creating a deficit with surgery microsurgery remains the best possible option for that patient however if the same cannot be done and there is a risk more than the usual radio surgery remains a valid treatment alternative radio surgery induced malignancy is a very rare phenomena with an incidence of 1 in 10000 patient population and it is not materially different from the general patient population 
With Gamma Knife, we now have more than five decades of experience and a plethora of publications on various indications. We should definitely discuss this treatment option with the patient, describing its specific role, especially for the residual or the recurrent tumor volumes. Most of these skull-based tumors are situated in the traditionally remote and difficult locations surrounded by critical neurovascular and intracranial structures. As in the case of a glomus tumor, it is surrounded by brain stem, vertebrobasilar complex and the lower cranial nerves. This procedure is very safe, even in the extremes of the ages. For some patients, the frame was an issue. Some patients were claustrophobic. For these patients, the new gamma-based technology, which is frameless, which is also called the icon, is an alternative which treats the patient with the same accuracy. And this is a daycare procedure. When the patient comes in the morning and by the evening, he is at home, calmly, safely, and they can go to their work on the very next day. To conclude, gamma knife radio surgery is a supplemental and complementary strategy to the conventional neurosurgery. It is a safe and effective treatment option for majority of the skull based pathologies with a long term outcome comparable to micro neurosurgery with better complication profile.